Charlie Munger's four best investment lessons that if you learn and apply in 2024, you will build wealth almost guaranteed. The world lost an investment legend in November, the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger. His net wealth was tipped to be almost 3 billion US dollars. And because of him helping Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, their investment fund, returned investors almost 20% returns per annum compared to the stock index, which was 9.9%. He outperformed the market by a quantum of 2x based on his four investment lessons, which I'm going to go through in this episode. I'm really excited to do this. And if you're a new investor or an experienced investor, but you want to get some runs on the board in 2024, then you have to watch and listen to the end. My name's PK and I help people build passive income through the Property Investment Accelerator. Use the data without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent. Every single time this channel, we talk about property, financial happiness, and the economy. Hit subscribe, hit the like button, and let's go. I'm going to apply Charlie Munger's four biggest lessons in the Australian real estate context. Number one, think long term. This is by Sarah Allen in her article, Livewire Markets. The big money, Charlie says, is not in the buying or selling, but in the waiting. Okay, so as a property investor, you might think, well, I got to buy and sell property, right? That's how I make money. In fact, you may see a table like this that says the benefits of timing the market. Like if you bought in Perth in 2005, and sold in 2008, you would have bought at 300K and sold at 480K with an increase of $180,000 in just three years. That's 60% growth. And that's really how property markets operate. They burst into life for short periods of time, two to four years on average for the boom period. And then they correct and plateau out and then they have another boom down the line. Sydney 2013 to 2016, you would have made $344,000 in just three years, 56% gain. Hobart bought in 2016, sold in 2019, bought for 370, sold for 551. You would have made 181,000 in three years, 49% gain. And Adelaide bought in 2020, sold in 2023, you would have bought for 500K, sold for 710K, made 210K in three years with a gain of 42%. So when you see a table like that, you're like, well, I don't know if Charlie's doctrine of long-term investing really holds true in the Australian real estate market, but you got to understand if you hold in Perth for another 10, 20, 30 years, that price is only going up. If you sold in Sydney in 2016, you would have sold at levels below where property prices are right now. Same with Hobart. And I tell you right now, please don't sell in Adelaide. Prices are still rocketing along in Adelaide. In 10 years time, will they be higher than what they are? Almost 99% sure that that's the case. That's how real estate markets work in Australia. So the big money is not in the buying or the selling, but in the waiting, okay? I just want to augment this, that the big money is also in the buying, okay? You gotta time the market, buy at the right time. Just like in this table, there was no point buying in 2008. The best time to buy was 2005 in Perth. There was no point buying in 2016 in, in Sydney. The best time was 2000. 2013. If you bought in 2016, you would have made no money basically until 2019. That's when the next boom started. So timing the market is very important. But going back to what Charlie is saying, don't sell. Don't sell out of emotion. So sell out of strategy if you have a true strategy. But in the long term, in the long term, you know, there's so many charts I can share, but life expectancy in Australia is expected to go up and up and up according to the 2023 intergenerational report life expectancy for females up to 90 years by the year 2063 life expectancy for males up to about 87 years by 2063 so there's an unlimited charts i can share how more life expectancy more need for housing will just further increase the demand and price of houses long term number two lesson from charlie munger ignore the noise focus on the fundamentals like the weather i just ignore the weather charlie says i try to invest whatever capital i have as best as I can and take results as they fall. I just seize whatever opportunity I can and hope 
I get my share. That's his advice. The economy, he says, is like the weather. You can try to predict it, but no one can perfectly predict the weather. Like right now, I can tell you that there's really no need for interest rates in Australia to go up. The only thing increasing inflation locally are petrol prices, building costs, housing rents, um, property taxes, and electricity costs. Those five things. By increasing interest rates, you're not reducing any of those five things actually increasing increasing inflation. All of those five things are driven by a supply shortage or supply shock, not on the demand side yet. I could tell you that, yet the RBA may increase rates anyway. So you can try to be really smart, but there's political agendas at play as well. So don't ignore the economy, don't ignore the weather, but don't decide whether you're going to work just if it's gonna rain or not, okay? Take an umbrella. So the same way, don't ignore the economy, but prepare for the economy and allocate your assets accordingly. But make sure you do indeed allocate and invest your assets is Charlie's advice. Number three, keep learning and keep trying your best. Spend each day trying to be a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well. Slug it out one inch at a time day by day. And presumably that's why you guys are all here, my wonderful community. That's why you're learning. I mean, none of these videos are particularly, I would say, entertaining from a production value, but they're filled with knowledge. And that's why you're here. You're trying to get better, keep learning day by day. And charts like this will really help you become more learned than you were before and actually make money in real estate. For example, according to Macrobond, Brisbane house prices are very cheap right now versus Sydney house prices. Typically, you can see on this red dotted line, Brisbane house prices are normally about 62.5% of the value in terms of price at versus Sydney house prices. And that oscillates up, down, up, down, up, down. So in 2009, they were really expensive. Brisbane had a massive decade at the turn of the new millennium. And then it really didn't do much. It slightly went down. It started to go down a bit. And then in 2013 to 17, 18, Sydney had a huge boom. And that's why the Brisbane house price differential really bottomed out. And then you had over the last few years since 2020, both Sydney and Brisbane performing well. Brisbane performing a little bit better than Sydney. According to this, it's catching up. But then Sydney, since mid-2022, has outperformed Brisbane. Its recovery has been a little bit stronger. But once again, Again, looking at the value play here, you know this line, if history rhymes, will come back up to equilibrium, then overcook it, then come back down again. And there we can make money in the Brisbane property market. Now you might say, well, Sydney's just one example. Show me another capital city that compares to Brisbane. And Melbourne's another example. Brisbane has outperformed Melbourne since 2017. And that's why this differential line, this blue line, is catching up to the long-term equilibrium or median. Obviously, Melbourne has not performed as well as national average over the last few years and Brisbane done terrifically well but there's still some legs to go before we start to see that sort of bubble category or bubble territory and then it, the differential starts to normalize so once you understand keep learning every day as Charlie says you can make it you can take advantage of charts and really read charts not just in the stock market but in the real estate market too and the fourth lesson Charlie says is you don't need to outsmart the market just avoid investing traps. It's remarkable, he says, how much long-term advantage people like us have gotten by trying to be consistently not stupid instead of trying to be very intelligent. I love that. And in the Australian context, I want to share with you this chart. It's an incredible chart and it's produced by Longview. And what it says is the compound annual growth rate, capital value for Melbourne residential property. And I want to also say this doesn't just relate to Melbourne, although that's their case study. This principle that I'm about to share is relevant for all capital cities and all regional areas in Australian real estate. You know, everyone, especially migrants, new communities, but a lot of people, when they start property investing, they think a new 
place, a brand new house or apartment is better than an established or existing dwelling. In fact, they think apartments are better because they have slightly higher rents or you know they're cheaper. And a lot of people say that new properties are easier to rent out. They have significantly or disproportionately less maintenance, which is a better thing over the long term. Not true. They also say that rents go up higher and all these sorts of things. But let's look at raw cold data over the long term. What this is saying is that over a 25 year period of time, which type of dwelling in the Melbourne context grows the most? And the conclusion, you know, you're not trying to outsmart the market. This is just called being plain, not stupid. New build apartment average over the long term is 1% compound annual growth rate. So please, if you follow Charlie, if you follow Longview in Melbourne or anywhere across Australia, don't buy a new build apartment for investment reasons. Even a period apartment, you know, post-war or older style apartments, even if they're not in high rise towers, they only perform 4% annual growth rate. Houses on average grow at 7%. That shouldn't be any news to any of you. Clearly better than both new and established apartments. But let's check this out. Old house average, old house average. You know, people might think, well, I want to buy a new house. It's brand new. I get a warranty. Uh, it looks shiny. I get depreciation benefits. But they grow at 10% annual growth rate over the long term. They are the fastest to double price growth 100% than any other category, okay? So yes, you might need to chip in a couple of thousand dollars extra a year in maintenance, but a 3% difference in CAGR, compound annual growth rate, 10% versus 7% to the average house price is hundreds of thousands of dollars over a five, 10, 15 year period, which eclipses the additional one or $2,000 in holding costs and not to speak of new houses. This is the house average. New houses grow between 5 and 6% on average. So if you're in Western Melbourne or in Western Sydney or you're looking out near Ipswich or Springfield in Brisbane, Greater Brisbane for a new house or in Perth, way up north or way down south, brand new house and land package, you can expect you know, it's not going to go backwards. It's going to be probably better than apartment. You can expect 5 to 6% growth, but why not buy a well-positioned infill location, owner-occupied demand, high rent, low maintenance type of dwelling, which is already established, an old house. And that way you can get three to four to five percent superior growth rate over the long term, which literally is hundreds of thousands of dollars versus a brand new or even average house. So those are Charlie's four biggest lessons. Think long term, ignore the economic noise, keep learning and trying your best, and you don't need to outsmart the market. Just don't be stupid. And if there's one motto that hopefully I've lived by and I've provided value in 2023 is hope Hopefully, I've enabled you to not make or avoid stupid decisions. Thank you for being part of this channel in 2023. Use these four lessons to invest wisely in 2024. Please do internalize them because in 10 years time, 2033 or 2034, if you apply these lessons, it's almost guaranteed that you would have made a killing, okay? My name's PK. Please level up. Remember the most important real estate is the six inches between your two ears. Invest in yourself first because no one else will. To level up, I'll leave links below to my free podcast, Oz Property Mastery with PK on Spotify, iTunes, and Google. I'll leave the link below. And also my Facebook group with almost 50,000 amazing community members, Australian Property Mastery with PK, links below. And I wish you a very Merry Christmas. I've just come back from holidays. I'm glad to be back and Happy New Year. Take care, guys. Bye.